American is not just different, but it is indeed unique. I think one of the most telling things that Barack Obama has ever said in all of the time that he has been in public life was when he was asked the question, do you believe in American exceptionalism? And his answer was, yes, just I, believe, I, I know the Greeks believe in Greek exceptionalism and the Brits believe in British exceptionalism. It's, if everyone is exceptional, nobody is exceptional. The President of the United States, let's just be very clear, he doesn't believe America is exceptional. Well, we're celebrating the 100th birthday of Ronald Reagan. And I can tell you that Ronald Reagan, who saw America as this shining city on the hill, this light to the world, he believed in American exceptionalism. He believed, as did George Bush, George W. Bush, he believed in America to be a force for good in the world. He believed that America was objectively good, that we could look at America, we could see true goodness and truth, not just for America, but for all of mankind. President Obama, when he first came into office, went around the, went around the world and apologized for America. He didn't see America as good. He saw America as something that was a force for disruption, even evil, even sinister aims. And so he felt like he had to pull back and say, we need to take hands off because America doesn't have the moral authority anymore to be able to make these kinds of uh, uh, entreaties into other countries and to try to help spread this objective truth that Reagan and Bush believed in. Well, there are real consequences to what Barack Obama did, and we're seeing them play out on the world stage today. We saw it just in, the, in, the, uh, in its nascent stage in the early part of his administration when we turned our back on the Poles and the Czechs, when we turned our backs on the Israelis, when we turned our backs on the Brits, we turned our backs on almost every one of our allies over the past year and a half, two years. But probably the worst situation was when we turned our backs a year and a half ago in Iran. In Iran, <laughs> there was a revolution in Iran, if this sounds familiar. There was a revolution of people, pro-democracy protesters, who were protesting fraudulent elections. And what did the President of the United States do? Did he side on the side of the protesters? Did he call for the current regime to step down? No. No, see, this current regime in Iran is an enemy of the United States. Not just an enemy of the United States, but a sworn enemy. He calls the United States the great Satan and has said that they want to destroy the United States and are developing a nuclear weapon to threaten not just the United States, but the entire world. And so what does this president do when faced with that situation? He sides with that regime. A year and a half later, there are protesters in the street, another corrupt, tyrannical regime, this time in Egypt, this time a friend of the United States. And what does the president of the United States do? He sides with the protesters. Now, I'm not suggesting that we shouldn't have sided with the protesters, but what message are we sending to countries around the world who are friends of ours? that when things get tough, we walk away. And what message I, on the other side are we sending to our enemies? That when things get tough, we'll be with them. This is not a policy. This is not a policy that's going to add to the security of this country. President Obama has refused to look at the situation in Iran and Egypt and around the world and do what Ronald Reagan was never afraid to do, was to call evil, evil. Was to identify... was to identify the enemy, to identify who the Muslim Brotherhood is, who the Iranian mullahs are and what they're all about. And no, it's not just the ter terrorist, although he doesn't even use the word terrorist, but they have an ideology, a theology, that wants to destroy Western civilization and the head of Western civilization, the United States of America. He doesn't say that jihadism is evil. He doesn't say that Sharia law is incompatible with Western civilization in the United States, which they are. An example of that is, if you look at the 9-11 Commission report, there were over 600 times where the word Islam, Muslim, jihadist, and Al-Qaeda were mentioned. In the last year's after-action review from the Fort Hood shooting, where the shooter, a jihadist, was yelling, Allah al-Akbar, 
The word Islam, Muslim, jihadist, Al-Qaeda, none of those words were ever mentioned in that report. This is not leadership. This is not moral authority. This is someone who doesn't believe in truth and evil and America.